Bug bounty can be overwhelming at first, but if you focus on the right strategies, you will improve way faster than just randomly hacking on platforms. In this video, I'll show you three powerful steps that will instantly make you better at bug bounty. Oh, and by the way, if this video hits 1000 likes, I will drop a one hour full course on bug bounty covering everything from start to finish. All right, with all of that being said, let's go straight into this video. So the first things first, the first step or the first thing that you actually need to understand once you start your hacking or bug bounty journey is picking a right program to start hacking. And this is number one misconception people actually make, especially at the beginner level. You go ahead, you see all of these numbers, for example, 20,000, and you want to hack on this program. That is a big mistake. You really should not be making these mistakes. And let me actually show you the correct way to pick a right program, especially at the beginner level. And it actually helped me find some vulnerabilities. Now, I'm going to show you why I'm actually on Buckcrowd and not on HackerOne. Buckcrowd has this feature, HackerOne doesn't. So I really recommend you try out Buckcrowd instead. Go over here to dates and just pick a program which has enrolled recently. It doesn't actually have to be that recent. You can even go up until past year. For example, not January, we can go comfortably go to February and click apply. And we can find that there is only one program which has been enrolled uh, in this time frame. Essentially, what this actually means is we have a program which we can hack on and think about it not a lot of people have seen this program because it was actually recent and you have as you can see only one vulnerability on this program has been awarded and it was two and a half thousand dollars so what you really need to take away from this is pick programs which have enrolled recently and this one started at february 13th so we picked that time frame from the last year up until now, it's March, so it's four months, and there's only one program that has been enrolled. Now, I would really like HackerOne to add this feature, or you can just go manually in HackerOne and search through them and see which ones you can find. This is an amazing thing, and this is an amazing thing to actually find out which programs have enrolled recently because it gives you much more leverage to find vulnerabilities because not a lot of actually people hacked on them because of their recency. They actually have just joined recently, and now you can go ahead and hack on these programs. Of course, you have to report any findings, so just make sure to be careful with that. What I actually have to say is, as you can see, there's only been one issue, and that issue was broken authentication and session management. That's literally it. And it was rewarded to and a half K, so it's probably P2. That's easy, dude. There's only been one vulnerability on this program, and I really love HackerOne to add this feature. I will link Buckcrowd and HackerOne as well as some other platforms which you can actually hack on in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and learn them. Now, let's go over to the second step. So now let's take a look at the second step or the second way to actually be good at bug bounty, especially at the beginner level, and this is something that I personally have experience in. What I'm actually going to tell you is you actually need to find reports that have been recently disclosed. Essentially, recently, everything that's been recently disclosed, you have to find out. I think you can filter them out basically when they've actually been like disclosed date from and to we can select a recent dates for example anything from february 1st let's go here and let's click apply let's see one of these recent reports that have been disclosed for example stored xss and blah 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 once you have all of the reports which you can find what you want to do essentially is go through them and see if they implemented a sufficient fix sometimes people actually don't implement a sufficient fix and it still can be exploitable instead of going on a website and just blind like just blindly hunting for vulnerabilities this is a much neater way to kind of get around it and know where to look because you go on a website which you want to hack on and you start just like digging that's it but now for example you want to go on shopify you don't know where to start so you just start looking for accesses all these vulnerabilities now you know where to look account takeover vulnerability let's take a look at this one see account takeover vulnerability in shopify collapse platform due to missing email verification simple straightforward and now you read all of this report and see how it was actually done how it was pulled off and then go over here and see how the fix was developed and then once you have all of this, go on Shopify again and try to see if the fix is sufficient. Even if it is, try to do something else. Try to, it was 800 bounty, but you can re be rewarded with the same bounty if you're actually going to be able to break the fix. Even, you can even get actually more bounty out of it. So just go ahead on these websites. For example, Shopify is just an example. Go on there 
and try to see if you can do this exact thing, but just try to do it like play with it to see if it actually has a sufficient fix for this issue that we have just addressed. And now if it works, if you find out that it actually wasn't good, then you can go ahead and report that to Shopify and earn 800 plus because from my experience, you've been always asked to do a retest if you find a vulnerability that will actually say, hey man, could you please do a retest instead to see, uh, to help us prevent this from being uh, happening in the future or whatever. So if you find a vulnerability the second time, for example, someone found it, then you found it, then they will actually tell you, give you a bonus, for example, for 50 to $100 to test it again. And that is a 100% a neat way to find yourself a quick bounty. And the last thing which I want to talk about is using scanners is definitely something that you should have not really rely on that much, but you should 100% use it. For instance, you have a website which you want to hack on. What you want to do essentially is scan it, for example, for subdomains. This is just an example, of course. So you basically have this subdomain finder and you actually enter the domain, for example, uh, discord.com. You can enter discord.com and you can basically click start scan and it will scan the discord.com domain uh no not quite sure it's csrf token is invalid so let's just restart it and as you can see we can now find a lot of stuff for example this is how i was able to discover a hidden game within the discord and as you can see this is just a hidden game which was released at 2020 2022 i'm sorry and you can find a lot of stuff that was pur purposefully left hidden so this is a great way to start your bug hunting journey. If you find, for example, something, a hash or and something that has been encoded or not encrypted, for example, there are encryption analyzers online, which will 100% analyze that and tell you what it could be. And that's another thing which you can have to rely on, because, for example, you have sessions, you have all of these things which you need to understand before jumping in and spawning vulnerabilities. I've already found I already have a video made on how you should actually put yourself in front of a website once you're finding a vulnerability. So maybe you want to check it out how you can see it in the top corner right now. But beside all of that, it's very simple once you get the gist of it. I mean, you see all of these hackers with years of experience, but the fact that they have years of experience means they have to start somewhere. And the way they started is pretty much important because it basically structuralizes their future. This is how they're basically doing all of this, essentially how they start. It really matters how you start. And if you have a right mindset at the start, you can even be better than all of these hackers that have found serious issues and got serious amount of money through bug bounty. So my advice for you is to keep pushing, utilize all of the techniques which I've mentioned and stay on the road. And thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video. And as always, stay safe and peace.